We continue our look at the ongoing drought situation in this province, the effects we're seeing right now, and some of the challenges that may lie ahead this spring and summer. One place we're already seeing that impact is power generation. BC Hydro says reservoirs are low, and that's causing ripple effects. With the Site C dam about to go online and start generating power, the province should be looking at much more power in its system. But the utility has had to import electricity from south of the border and Alberta. And while it can offset some of those costs by buying power when it's being sold on the cheap and selling back when it's going more, uh, there is still worry about the season ahead. And now BC Hydro is hoping to generate more power and in different ways. Joining me now is Kwatuma Sires. He's executive director of Clean Energy BC and a member of the Hupetchaset First Nation. So Kwatima, what are you watching specifically as BC heads into the spring and summer season in regards to power generation? Uh, well, I'm looking at BC Hydro's uh, call for power. They've issued uh, the first call for power in 15 years. So it's, it's, uh, it's scary with droughts, you know, showing us that, you know, climate change is here, it's impacting our infrastructure. Um, but it is an exciting time because we are taking actions right now to ensure that we're going to have uh, clean energy when we need it. Because um, even when C comes online, we're still going to need more power. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to need more power. Um, and so it's, it is an exciting time in that sense. It's hard to get excited about droughts and other things. And it's showing us that, you know, that, that we need to diversify our electricity production. And certainly with this call for power, we're going to see that. We're going to bring on cost-effective options in terms of wind and solar into the grid so that mm -hmm. we can help make sure rates remain affordable, clean, um, and environmentally responsible. Yeah, let, let's talk more about that. It seems BC Hydro has put all of its eggs, you might say, in the hydroelectricity basket. Uh, they seem to be moving to create a more robust system, but is this all moving fast enough given those demands we're going to see? That is the question is, you know, do we, can, we have to match our efforts with the pace of electrification. And this is what we're seeing everywhere, in all jurisdictions all across the world, where we need to, we need to figure out how we're going to reduce greenhouse gas uh, emissions, meet our climate targets, while also safeguarding our, our economy from climate change and, and make sure our economy is competitive and we can attract capital. These are all very difficult, especially when you want to keep things affordable. That's why it's key to bring in more clean energy into our grid so that we have you know, a, di a diverse range of clean energy, but also that we're actually going to be able to meet our electricity uh, needs mm -hmm. in the future. Striking that balance, the, the magic task. Uh, with a shortage of power, is it cheaper and faster uh, to restart traditional energy creation infrastructure? We'll give the example of, say, restarting a power source like the Burrard, a generating station. Do you think BC Hydro perhaps mothballed that facility a little too quickly? Well, I think what's important for viewers to, to think about when we consider, you know, uh, natural gas is that, you, you know, we should consider the energy transition and moving towards the new economy that moves towards our strengths, which is clean electricity, that where corporations will want to invest here to meet their ESG targets and ensure that there are high paying jobs here in British Columbia, like the Emoli $1 billion investment here in Lower Mainland. Mm. We want to see more of that. In order to do that, we need more clean elect electrons. And so, Moving, to, moving towards like those old technologies kind of makes it more difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. And finally, do, do small projects make sense financially? I mean, what are the trade-offs between big infrastructure projects, things like Site C, and smaller, more diverse projects? Yeah, well, this is the exciting part. You know, the province has put forward $140 million to support uh, what will likely be First Nations-led projects mm -hmm. that are distribution scale. Uh, but with this call for power, we're going to see bigger utility scale wind and solar. And with those with that size projects, we're going to see uh, economies of scale. So costs are going to come down. Wind, solar, they've come, the costs have come down with the past decade of 90 or 90% for solar, 70% for wind. And we see it in other markets like Alberta last week, when renewable energy comes on, prices come down. Mm -hmm. um, so it's um, certainly an exciting time for our industry. We're, we're excited to have opportunity to bring these clean, affordable projects into BC. Um, well, we certainly appreciate all your insight on this. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today.